Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the quadratic formula. So anytime you have an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, then you can use what is called the quadratic formula. And that's what's in this red circle right here, the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula here. So it reads x equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There you go. They have songs out there to help you memorize this, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm old school and I believe in conditioning. So simply write down the equation every time you use it and you'll end up memorizing it. So just write it down every single time and it'll be at the ready when you need it during a test or a quiz. Okay, so that's the formula. There you go. So for instance, ladies and gentlemen, notice that I have the A underline, the B underline, the C underline. Well, those are the coefficients in the equation, the numbers in front of the variables. All right, so for instance, if I have an example here of 2x squared minus 3x minus 8 equals to 0, notice how that's already said equal to 0, then my A value would be 2 my B value would be negative 3. Notice that that minus sign is also a negative sign, so it needs to come with that value. And then your C value would be negative 8. All right. So once you have these three values, your A value, your B value, and your C value, then you can go ahead and plug those values into this quadratic formula. That'll give you the answers that you're looking for. Okay. And the beautiful thing about the quadratic equation is that it doesn't matter whether that quadratic equation can be factored or not is still going to give you the answers that you're looking for. So it's a really great strategy to have on hand when you're solving quadratic equations. All right, so let's look at some examples, shall we? All right, great. We have problem number one, which is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So notice over here to the right, I already have the quadratic equation written for me. So you just make sure that you're writing it down every time you use it. That helps you memorize it and get more familiar with it. That I strongly recommend. So for the A value, I have 2. For the B value, negative 5. And for the C value, negative 3. Yeah, just like that. Now that I have my three values that I need for the equation, I'll go ahead and plug those in. So I'll have here that x will equal to negative negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. Okay, so that's what I have in the numerator of the formula. And then for the denominator, it will be 2 times my A value, which is 2. And that's what I have thus far. After you plug in all your values, then, of course, you need to simplify it. So we're going to be following the order of operations. All right, so check out PEMDAS is wrong if you have a chance. All right, then simplifying this, we'll have negative negative 5 is just a positive 5. And this is going to be plus or minus the square root of 5 squared is 25 plus 4 times 2 times 3. This gives me a positive 24. All of this is going to be over 4. So what happened underneath the radical is that negative 5 squared means negative 5 times negative 5. So that gives me a positive 25. And then multiplying negative 4 times 2, you end up with negative 8. And then negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. So that's what I have thus far. Then, moving forward, we'll go ahead and simplify further underneath the radical sign. So I'm going to bring down my 5. This is going to be plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 4. And then, continuing further, you'll have 5 plus or minus the square root of 49 is 7. And all of that is going to be over 4. Now, notice that we have that plus or minus symbol between the 5 and the 7, right? Well, that means you have two different situations. One, I'll have 5 minus 7 divided by 4, and I'll also have 5 plus 7 divided by 4, okay? Just like that. So, moving forward, 5 minus 7 is negative 2, so that's negative 2 fourths. And in the second scenario, 5 plus 7 is 12 over 4, all right? 
But these are still not our final answers. Your final solution for your variable x, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the simplification of both of these fractions. So negative 2 fourths simplified is negative 1 half, and 12 fourths is 3. And that is my answer. These are supposed to be braces, ladies and gentlemen, but my braces suck. So that's the best I can do, all right? I don't know why I can't draw a good brace, but that's all I have for you, okay? But these are the solutions. There you go, okay? Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. So recapping over this, we started out with our original equation. It is already set equal to zero, so it's in that format of ax squared plus bx plus c. And so the equation 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 yields the following values for our coefficients. A equals to 2, B equals to negative 5, C equals to negative 3. We already have our formula written down for us. You should write it down every time and we simply plugged it in from there. And then we just simplify this. That's all we did. Yeah, we just simplify that. And then simplifying the radical, breaking it down, remembering that that plus or minus symbol means that you'll have two separate conditions, all right, that you must solve for. And there's your result right there. X equals to negative 1 half and 3, ladies and gentlemen. So if those values were plugged back into our original equation, it would equal to zero. And that's what you're looking for. These answers, ladies and gentlemen, are called roots. They're called the solutions. They're called many different names, but that's how you use the quadratic formula. All right. They're also called zeros. So zeros, solutions, answers, results, roots, all of those things mean the same thing when it comes to solving a quadratic equation. Let's look at the next problem, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Problem number two. In problem number two here, I have 2x squared equals to 4 minus 7x. So notice that our equation is not set equal to zero. Well, that's our first step. So you got to do that first, right? So I'm going to start by adding 7x to both sides of the equal sign. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to subtract 4 to both sides of the equal sign as well. That's right. Okay. So I end up rewriting the equation to look like this. It'll be 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals to zero. So this is my rewrite of the initial equation. I had to have it set up in its standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c so that I can get my solutions here. Okay, So then we'll go ahead and write down those coefficients. My a value would be 2, my b value is 7, and my c value is negative 4. And I'll be plugging in these three values into the quadratic formula. So that's do just that. Here, this is going to be x equals to negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 4. All of this is going to be over 2 times 2. All right, so that's me plugging in all of the coefficients, the a, the b, and the c values. From there, we simplify. So in simplifying this, I end up with negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32. So I have 32 here all over 4. All right. Simplifying underneath the radical, we end up with negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 32 will give us 81. And all of that is going to be over 4. Okay. Now, simplifying the square root of 81, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be 9 because 81 is a perfect square. So the next step, I'll have negative 7 plus or minus 9 all over 4. So just like the previous problem, you'll have two scenarios that you'll have to solve. One, you'll have negative 7 minus 9 over 4. And then the other, you'll have negative 7 plus 9 over 4. So remember, if all of the values are like terms, as we have in this problem here, you are responsible for simplifying this all the way. So for our first solution, you'll have negative 16 over 4. And then in the second solution, you'll have 2 over 4. So these two solutions will simplify to give you the following results for x. I'm trying to get those braces working again. You'll end up with negative 4 as well as positive 1 half. All right, and that's the answers, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, those are your solutions there. So all we did was follow the same steps as the previous problem, except we had to rewrite our initial equation into standard form. 
So we rewrote it by adding 7x to both sides of the equal sign as well as subtracting 4 to both sides of the equal sign to get a rewritten equation of 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equal to 0. And then we went ahead and plugged in our coefficients into the quadratic formula there. All right, that was problem number two, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep it moving here. All right, got more problems to show you. This is problem number three. Check it out. We have 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. So it's already set equal to 0. So we don't have to do any manipulation of the equation, right? We can just write down our coefficients. It's already in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So my a value is 9. The b value is negative 6. My c value is positive 1. And then I'll be plugging those values into the quadratic formula there. So plugging it in, we have the following. We'll have x equals to negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 9 times 1 all over 2 times 9. So this is what I have thus far. Now, simplifying this, you'll end up with positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 36 all over 18. All right. So notice that underneath the radical here, negative 6 squared means negative 6 times 6, which is 36. And then negative 4 times 9 is negative 36 times 1 is still negative 36. Well, these additive inverses, these opposites, will combine to give us 0. So you'll have 6 plus or minus the square root of 0 all over 18. Well, what is the square root of 0, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, it's 0. So we'll have 6 plus or minus 0 over 18. And 0 doesn't change a thing, ladies and gentlemen. Whether I add 0 to 6 or subtract 0 from 6, it's going to be 6 as an end result. Therefore, your result is just 6 18ths. And then, of course, we simplify that into 1 third. And this is our solution, ladies and gentlemen. You'll just get one answer for this problem. So notice in our previous two problems, we had two solutions, whereas in this one, you have one solution. And why is that? It's because that underneath our radical, which is also called the discriminant, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we end up with a value of zero. So anytime the discriminant equals to zero, you'll end up with only one solution, and a rational solution at that. Okay, so that's our answer for problem number three done and done. Let's look at the next problem. For problem number four, we have x squared plus 4x equals to 7. Now, notice our equation is not set equal to 0, right? So we'll need to subtract 7 to both sides first. So that's my first step is to rewrite this equation as x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals to 0. All right, so that's my rewritten equation. Once again, I'll need to identify my coefficients, the a, the b, and the c value. And in this case, I just have x squared. Well, the coefficient is 1. So anytime you just have x squared, the coefficient is 1. That's 1x squared there. So my a value is 1, my b value is 4, and my c value is negative 7, just like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to plug that into the formula. Notice that I have it already written here. Write down yours. Plug in these values. I'll have x equals to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7 all over 2 times 1. All right, so now simplifying this, I'll end up with x equals to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 28. We get 28 by multiplying negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4, and then negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28. All of this is going to be over 2. Simplifying this further, we'll have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 28. That's going to give us 44, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll have the square root of 44 here all over 2. Next, we'll be simplifying our radical here. Remember, if you need help simplifying square roots, check out our video called Simplifying Square Roots. All right? So what I notice is that I do have a perfect square within 44, which is 4. So I'm going to expand this to read negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 11 all over 2. 
then this will give me the following result. I'll end up with negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2 and that leaves me with the square root of 11 all over 2. Notice that all three elements in this rational expression can be reduced by 2 so we'll be doing just that. So in simplifying this further 2 goes into negative 4 negative 2 times and this is going to be plus or minus 2 goes into itself once so that leaves you with just the square root of 11. So since these are unlike terms ladies and gentlemen you can leave the answer just like this. In some classes you may need to expand this to show the two different formats of the solution meaning that you can write one of the solutions as negative 2 minus the square root of 11 or negative 2 plus the square root of 11 but most classes will accept the plus or minus symbol there. Alright so I'm gonna leave mine just like that and also because I'm out of room here. So here's my solution. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. Once again you can expand this to write it separately as negative 2 minus the square root of 11 and negative 2 plus the square root of 11 to write your solutions that way. So that's our answer ladies and gentlemen. So that's problem number four. Let's move on to the next problem from red to black and next problem. Here we have problem number five ladies and gentlemen. We have 5x squared minus 8x equals to 3. Once again our equation is not set equal to 0 so that's our first step. Set this equation equal to 0. We'll do that by subtracting 3 to both sides of the equal sign. So rewriting our quadratic equation you'll end up with 5x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals to 0. Okay, so that's my rewritten equation. Knowing that our next step is to write down the coefficients a, b, and c, let's go ahead and do just that. My a value is going to be 5, my b value is negative 8, and my c value is negative 3. Just like that. Now I'll be plugging it into the quadratic formula. Hopefully you've been writing it down every time, right? So let's go ahead and plug in those values. We'll have x equals to negative negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 3 all over 2 times 5, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so that's just plugging it directly into the quadratic formula. Next, we'll be simplifying, so let's do just that. We'll have the following. We'll have positive 8 plus or minus the square root of 64. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, and negative 20 times negative 3 is positive 60. All of this is going to be over 10. Simplifying further, you'll have 8 plus or minus the square root of 124. All of this is going to be over 10. And then, moving along, we'll have 8 plus or minus the largest perfect square that'll go evenly into 124, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be 4. So this is going to give me 4 times 31. All of that is going to be over 10. Now, we'll be able to take the square root of 4, so let's do that. We'll have 8 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 31 all over 10. And once again, notice how all three elements can be reduced by 2 in this situation. So we'll have the following result. We'll have 4 plus or minus the square root of 31 all over 5. And that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. You can't break this down any further. Once again, you can write the solution separately, meaning that you can have one solution that's written as 4 minus the square root of 31 all over 5, or 4 plus the square root of 31 over 5. But most classes will accept the plus or minus symbol, especially if you're doing it by hand. That's problem number five, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. Let's move on to the next problem. Problem number six. Here I have my last problem to show you ladies and gentlemen. We have x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals to 0. Alright, so let's see what happens here. It's already set equal to 0 ladies and gentlemen, so we don't have to worry about manipulating the equation, thankfully. And so my a value is 1, the b value is negative 2, and the c value is 5. Now plug that into the quadratic formula. We have x equals to negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. All of this is going to be over 2 times 1. Once I have this set up, ladies and gentlemen, we can then simplify. So we'll have next positive 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 20. All of this is going to be over 2. Alright, so this equals to 2 
plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 20 is going to give us negative 16 and all of that is going to be over 2. Well normally ladies and gentlemen you would not be able to continue this problem because you have an impossibility here. You have the square root of a negative number. So that means that we'll be using complex numbers aka imaginary numbers to complete this problem. So keeping in mind that i squared is negative 1 we'll rewrite this as 2 plus or minus the square root of 16i squared all over 2. Then, continuing on, you'll have 2 plus or minus 4i all over 2. And then notice, once again, that all three of our elements here can be reduced by 2. So you'll end up with a result of 1 plus or minus 2i. And that'll be your answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's it. Once again, that can be split up into 1 minus 2i and 1 plus 2i. If you ever need notes on your complex numbers, check out our video on imaginary and complex numbers. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Bend Tutoring, and this has been Solving Quadratic Equations Using the Quadratic Formula. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves out there. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.